isolated exchange rim interlocking nail is most likely indicated as the next step in treatment for which of the following clinical scenarios. 1. Tibial shaft non-union with a 4CM bone defect. 2. Infected tibial shaft non-union. 3. Hypertrophic tibial shaft non-union with an oblique fracture pattern. Number 4. Atrophic tibial shaft non-union. Number 5. Delayed union of a transverse tibial shaft fracture 3 months post-op. And the answer is number 3. Hypertrophic tibial shaft non-union with an oblique fracture pattern. The reason for other condition is also stated and highlighted. And again the reason is there. Allow me to revise regarding a delayed union and non-union. What is delayed union? It is a slow progression of callus formation and osseous healing in a fracture from 3 to 6 months post-injury. A non-union is a slow or absent progression of callus formation and osseous healing in a fracture greater than 6 months post-injury. A non-union usually occur when there is an excess motion, fracture A vascularity, fracture gapping, infection or a combination of these cause are present. The treatment of established non-union include electrostimulation, pulse low intensity ultrasound, compression plate fixation, Augmentative plating that leave the nail in situ after primary nailing, exchange rim nailing, that way the answer is, autogenous bone grafting, free fibula transfer, Elizarov technique. Two of the more common secondary surgical technique used in the treatment of delayed union and non-union after intramedullary nail failure are dynamization and exchange nailing. Dynamization involves the removal of proximal or distal locking screw in a statically locked intramedullary nail, allowing the weight bearing to stimulate osseous growth at the fracture site. In exchange nailing, it consists of removal of the current intramedullary nail debridement of the medullary cavity followed by insertion of a larger intramedullary nail. This procedure utilizes the rimming and increased fracture stability to stimulate osseous growth. The different variation of this procedure has been reported with varying rates of success attributed to factors such as the use of bone grafting, the size of the medullary rimming and different nail lock method. So the reason for the number 3 answer is if a hypertrophic non-union is present, it is most likely a mechanical issue. Hypertrophic non-union has approximately an 85% to 90% incidence of union with exchange rim nailing. A non-union that has bone loss or appears atrophic will usually require improved mechanical stability as well as biological stimulation in the form either autograph or an osteoinductive substance like bone morphogenic protein or we call it a BMP. A bone defect up to 5 to 6 cm in length can usually achieve union with bone grafting. In the presence of infected non-union, the infection need to be addressed prior to the introduction of any revision hardware. If a patient does not show radiographic signs of tibial fracture union for 9 months and does not have progression towards healing for the 3 consecutive months, then revision surgery should be indicated.
Tempamai et al. look at 71 tiba shaft fracture treated with non-lock or dynamically locked intramedullary nail and found the loss of alignment in 11% of the fracture that, that, that were not transverse in nature. They concluded that these nailing techniques should not be used in the treatment of spiral or oblique tibial shaft fracture. This explains why hypertrophic tibial shaft non-union occur with an oblique fracture pattern.